my loving greetings vanakkam namaste prem namaskar to one and all of you in my previous episode in the journey of the soul i stated that after going through the experiences of life in this world we reach the state of absolute pureness and become liberated from the cycle of births and deaths and reach the sacred lotus feet of the lord and remain in oneness and synergy with him in eternal peace and in immortal bliss we are not able to see god because he is transcendental or infinitive in nature he is beyond time and space he is beyond all names and forms he is beyond human comprehension therefore it is impossible for the finite mind of man to fathom the infinite power of god god is one with you like salt dissolved in water the salt is not visible so too god is within you and you are not able to see him one dry irukala he is within you merged with your mind dancing in your intellect vibrating in the cells of your body and pulsating in your veins he is wooden eye within he is separate from you where i god cannot be perceived or known by the mental being he is beyond the realm of the sensorium or the senses the soul must merge its separate individuality and its ego conscious self to the divine it must take a perfect surrender to the divine grace and melt its heart in prayer through love and devotional prayer the grace opens the inner eye to a higher vision a vision beyond the mind through the vision of grace the soul sees the light and leads to the lord god is neither a mutable object nor a non entity he is sat the truth he is so the all blissful chat or the conscious force is his power of manifestation in this world this force is called grace knowledge wisdom will and even energy to attain grace is the first step to god realization sages called god sava as sat or the truth attained as the conscious bliss they call it, called him this chit sat or the truth attained through his conscious grace he has no mortal birth of body because he is not afflicted by ego karma or even the world he is not subject to the law of evolution it is his will that turns the wheel of progressive evolution he is not known by the limited limited little minded creature we call knowledge or pasunyano is known only through the divine wisdom inspired by his grace which we refer to as padinyano or arunyano the child prodigy saint tirunyana samandha knew siva only after drinking the milk of his grace this does not mean that god must not be meditated upon or worshiped in a particular form god is omnipresent the five elements of nature the sun the moon 
and all the souls are his embodiments. These are the fountains of life here in this world. God is beyond imagination, perception, conception and sensation. He is beyond words. Even the scriptures are unable to express him adequately. God is nameless, formless, featureless, measureless, limitless and endless. But he is present in all. He is the male in the man, the female in the woman and the darling in the child. He is love in the heart. He is immanent in all nature. He is present in the elements of nature as Shakti or energy. Even the energy in the minutest particle we refer to as the atom, the energy pulsating in an atom is the energy of the divine, which we refer to as Shakti. And scientifically, if we split an atom, it produces two things. One is light and the other is energy. Light represents the absolute divine, the manifestation of the divine, and the energy is the power of the divine or Shakti. He is the tune in the harp, the fragrance in the flowers or blossoms, the light in the sun, the coolness in the moon, the heat in the flame, the sound in heather or space, and the smell in the earth. He cannot be caught by the mind, he is caught only in the heart's devotion. Many are his glories and are symbolized in idols, words, forms and ideas. To adore any one of them is idolatry. No religion is an exception to this. Islam does not conceive a form for him, but it builds a mosque for him and it faces the Kaaba in worship. It adores him in the form of prayer. The Sikh religion does not adore a form, but adores the word and builds symbolic temples for him. Christians build churches and adore him in the cross as a symbolic manifestation of Christ. Savism adores him in all aspects. It worships his cosmic dance, his creative play, Leela, in the form of Nadaraja. It adores his silent, omniscient wisdom in the form of Dakshina Murti. It adores his Shiva Shakti or Mother Father principle in the form of Shivalingam. All the images and temples are artistic and visual symbols of divine glory. They are there not to supersede God, but to aid the mind in meditation. They are like kindergarten gifts to spiritual children. There is no religion that has not got some such symbols. Word, forms, building, prayer books are all definitive symbols. So let none cry down temples or any places of worship. Whether they worship in churches, mosques, synagogues, temples, mandirs, or anywhere in God's limitless space under the sky. They adore God and that too in their hearts. All symbols are images of heart's love. Without that worship, 
is worth nothing. When 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 one worships another raja, it is not the brass or the stone that stone that is worship, but the truth symbolized in them that is being worshipped. So when we pray to God, we must realize that. is the ultimate destination in our lives we reach the abode of god to remain eternally in oneness and synergy with god so that we can experience eternal peace and immortal bliss in synergy with god without god you have no life because the flowing grace the abundant love and the divine blessings of god enables your life to unfold the way it does so surrender to god in the journey of your life god bless you